Hi viewers, today I am talking with Ellen Clifford, a renowned activist and author. I would like you to introduce yourself. Um, hello audience of Together. Um, it's really good to be speaking to you. I uh, would describe myself as a disabled activist first and foremost. Um, I've also worked in the disability sector mainly within deaf and disabled people's user-led organisations for longer than I care to remember, over 20 years. Um, Yes, and I had the opportunity to write a book, so now apparently I'm a writer as well. <laughs> so what led you to activism in the first place? And what, what do you describe activism to mean? For me, activism is, I suppose it's a bit stronger than campaigning, because I think campaigning can be done in many different ways. And certainly within Disabled People Against Cuts, DPAC, which I've been a member of since, since 2011, we've used every tool in the campaign's box to try and hold back the cuts uh, that have occurred that have disproportionately hit disabled people. So we've used legal challenges. Uh, we managed to trigger an unprecedented U United Nations investigation. Um, and that's meant a lot of collating evidence and, and reporting. So that's another thing I work on, lobbying MPs, etc., petitions, trying to raise awareness. But for me, activism, I suppose, is where you're also prepared to take the step of civil disobedience to try and change society for the better, where you see that that's the only option open to you. So stopping buses, sitting in Parliament Square, that kind of activity. Yeah, peaceful civil disobedience. So just thinking a little bit more about activism. At some point, you've made a decision that you wanted to not just affect uh, what's going on in terms of the politics, but also other people are around understanding activism and rights. How did that come about? I think through probably the political analysis that I have come to through my years of being involved in the disability sector and campaigning for deaf and disabled people's rights, um, I came to the analysis that the only way that we can affect the level of change that we need in order to achieve full inclusion and equality uh, for deaf and disabled people uh, is, to, is to win fundamental change in society. And in order to do that, because we're not, you know, the many of us don't hold the power in society, it needs the many of us to come together collectively to force through that change because that level of change is never handed down from above. History tells us that. It's something that we have to fight for uh, and demand from below. It has led you to wanting to write about it, to spread the word. So uh, you, your most recent, perhaps first book, um, but still most recent, um, is, uh, I'm going to get the title so I don't get it wrong, is entitled The War on Disabled People, Capitalism, Welfare and the Making of a Human Catastrophe. In a nutshell, what's the book about? Um, so the book actually covers the period from 2010 up until uh, the end of the end of 2019 was when I really finished drafting it, um, and it it covers the period of unprecedented cuts that disproportionately affected disabled people that were taking forward as part of the legis legislative and policy uh, changes, badged as reforms that the successive governments. Uh, took forward over that period uh, and the impact that those had on disabled people. Even though it is your first book, you actually been nominated and received um, an award. So would you like to tell us a bit about that award? So um, the, there's an alliance of radical booksellers. Um, so those are booksellers um, who stock books that uh, have anti-capitalist um, analyses, um, be that anarchist, socialist, um, you know, the full spectrum. Um, they have an alliance and they have an annual award that started in 2012. And that award is for radical publishing. This was the, this, this is the first book that deals with 
um, disability and the oppression of disabled people to win. Um, so I think that that felt quite significant. Um, one of the one of the frustrations that I came across in researching for the book was disabled people feeling that non-disabled people really aren't interested uh, well in disability um, and in you know the social model of disability which is you know the cornerstone really of, of disability campaigning in uh, in Britain um, and we always want to tell people about the social model and we get frustrated when they don't seem to be interested I mean the analysis in the book is that uh, you know the dominant ideas in society um, are, are ones that people unconsciously take on board uh, and unfortunately the dominant ideas in society about disability are, are negative ones they're ones that portray us as as passive victims um, as burdens on society sometimes they portray it as as a very personal matter uh, an individual matter rather than the deeply political collective issue that it is and I think once people realize that suddenly disability becomes more interesting to them. Um, they see that it is actually, you know, relevant to society rather than just being, you know, a personal matter for an individual, how terrible that person's life is. Um, and it, it did so winning the award and having a panel of non-disabled judges <laughs> make the award, it, it kind of felt like maybe this could be a bit, bit bit of a breakthrough moment where more people are starting to take notice of our politics in, in a serious way, but actually in a way that, that means there's serious engagement with our issues. What's next for Ellen Clifford? Um, well, um, I'm currently involved with Reclaiming Our Futures, well, I'm constantly involved with Reclaiming Our Futures Alliance, but in a current capacity is working on the next shadow report for the United Nations. Um, so feeding back on how the government's done or hasn't done on the recommendations that the Disability Committee previously set for them. That's a piece of paid work. Um, but then I am negotiations for a, a new book, going to be a book on COVID and disability um it, taking an international perspective not just you know what happened here um but but looking at the disproportionate impact and we know that in you know in the uk at least 60 percent of covid related deaths were disabled people that's just a minimum estimate and yet you know i think there wasn't the the kind of outcry that disabled people feel that ought to have been we know that disabled people were deprioritized for health treatment um, and this is it this is similar picture all across the world um, and at the same time there are more and more countries enacting legislation that makes it easier for disabled people to to, to die through legalizing assisted suicide so it, it's looking at those sort of questions of the right to life in the current era for disabled people one of the things i will be negotiating in the contract stage is an audio book um the war on disabled people being my first book i didn't realize that's when you need to uh to to, to get these things signed off um, and Bloomsbury did actually agree to an audio book in the end, but then there was the pandemic and they stopped recording. So um, I'm told the audio book will be out in December. For the War on Disabled People, I did an easy read summary and Deepak also got that translated into BSL, which are available um, to try and to try and make it more accessible because that's, I mean, it is a big thing with books. Um, uh, you know issues around accessibility brilliant well thank you so much for your time wish you luck with writing it and look forward to you know reading it or probably listening to it if i'm honest thank you ellen thanks robin <laughs>